<coughs> takes a minute to motivate. Uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting for July 25th. Uh, first thing we have is a public hearing of RSA 674 to accept the following streets as Class V highways. Philbrook Terrace, Brown Ave from Highland Ave to Island Path, Parr Street, Naves Road, Beatrice Lane, Merrill Industrial Drive, Summerwood Drive, Blake Lane, Milbourne Ave, Noel Street, Fox Road, Vanderpool Drive, <laughs> Ward Lane, Jones Ave, Curtis Street, Yetton Street, Mary Bachelor Road, Huntington Place, Higgins Lane, Malick Circle, Glen Road, Mill Pond Road, Wheaton Lane Terrace, and Taylor Streets. Mr. Chairman, uh, all of these streets have been properly accepted by the Planning Board but have not been accepted by the town as Class 5 highways. In our research, we're trying to clear up all the discrepancies. Uh, once these are accepted, uh, we have, I think, about 25 or 30 left to go to clear the town. I know you've been doing a good job at trying to get them all trying cleaned up. Done. We've got a lot of them done. So anybody from the public who would like to speak about these, the acceptance of these public streets? Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak to these uh, acceptance of public streets? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Regina? No, not. Nada. Phil? So moved. Rick? Okay. <coughs> Seeing that? Second. Motion passed. Make a motion. We accept them. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Public hearing is closed. Now we have a public comment period. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? Good evening, everyone. Uh, for the record, I'm Chris Munns from Five Nersessian Way. Um, I just wanted to speak briefly to the item on the consent calendar, uh, consent agenda, the um, request to use the Selectman's Room for a uh, candidate's night on October 13th. Um, every state election since 2008, the Hampton Democratic Committee and the Hampton Republican Committee have co-sponsored um, a debate between candidates for state representative, state senate, and this year we'd like to also add executive counselor, um, and um, we have uh, already gotten the um, agreement from Bob Casaza to serve as moderator again, and we will have reporters from, uh, we will invite reporters from the Hampton Union and the Winnicott Winnic Chronicle to uh, ask questions of the candidates, and we hope that um, you'll, uh, you'll approve that uh, request this evening, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Public comment. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for the announcements and community calendar. I don't Regina. have anything, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing this evening. Bill? Negative, sir. Yep. I would just like to welcome back the town manager after his Ooh, yeah. um, vacation slash... Oh, with a knife. <laughs> with a knife, yeah. <laughs> and it's glad to see you back so soon. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. So we have the consent agenda. Consent agenda consists of a Ham Ham Hampton Cemetery deed, a raffle permit by the Hampton Youth Association, a release of a welfare lien, seafood vendors' permits, and the use of the selectmen's room for a candidate's night. Move the consent agenda. All right, move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next thing we have is appointments. First one is Christy Pullman. I'm here with uh, the June financials. Uh, it's the sixth report of 2016, so the target is 50%, halfway there. It's hard to believe. The month's total income came in at $616,962. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 317361 which is over the adjusted month's target by 48000 
The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $54,062, building permits at $23,020, departmental income at $84,687, parking lots at $88,927, and the real estate trust at $39,753. Um, I did a update uh, in the 2016 adjusted budget column. I have updated it since we finished another quarter, and I had told you guys the auditors had suggested we update our revenue on a regular basis as opposed to just the once a year when you do the MS1 uh, in um, September. So I have updated that column, and I compared all the numbers to that. Uh, when the revenue is compared to June of 2015, the following is true. Interest on taxes is down by 32000 FD permits are up by 3859 Motor vehicle income is up by $123,986. Building permits are down by 19398 Departmental income is down by 73131 Parking lots are up by 37,432, franchise fees are down by 53,785, and the revenue as a whole is down by 97,869. The expense summary shows the year-to-date expenses by department. <coughs> At the end of June, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs were 46.2% spent. Um, I do expect this amount to shrink as we are now in the full swing of summer here. In June of 2015, we were at 48.2% spent compared to the 46.2 in 2016. In June of 15, we were 420,915 under budget. When you compare the departmental totals from June of 15 to June of 16, the largest difference you would find was uh, the snow in the highways and streets. That was a big difference there. On page uh, one, over, 1 through 15, overall, the departments as a whole are running under the target of 50%. Uh, and I will note the departments, any line items that were over 70% 70 per, 70 for you. Um, on page two, under voter registration, supplies and expenses is at 82.47%. Finance, OT wages are at 100.76%. MIS, uh, supplies and expenses are at 117 0.83%. Planning Board contracted services and dues is at 75.3%. And the department as a whole is now over target at 52.23%. Cemeteries, the two accounts to note there are telephones at 73.69% and heating fuel at 100.3%. Parking administration, uh, the account to note there would be supplies and expenses is at 106 percent. The police department as a whole is 44.14% when you include the purchase orders. Uh, accounts to note there are under administration, computer supplies and expenses at 111.22%. Traffic control and patrol, um, under that you have the sick leave wages at 78.13%. Training as a whole section is over target at 65.54%. And under support services, OT training wages are at 159.09% and vacation wages are at 80.14%. Police stations and buildings, OT wages are at 95.39%. The fire department is at 50.551% overall when the open POs are included. Accounts to note here are under administration, the career incentives are at 213.57%. Fire suppression OT wages are at 100.71%. Equipment other is at 81.56%. And repair services OT wages are at 135.15%. Highways and streets is at 39.09% overall when the open POs are in are included. Uh, accounts to note here are under administration. Rentals and leases are at 151.45% and supplies and expenses are at 73.86%. Under municipal sanitation, it's running slightly under target at 48.57.
If you don't include the annual purchase order for chemicals, it's at uh, uh, it's under target at 46.3%. Some accounts to note in this section are under administration hired equipment summer is at 812.18%. Landfill operations, uh, groundwater monitoring is at 116.51%. Transfer station repairs and maintenance is at 148.88%. Hired equipment summer is at 500% and supplies and expenses is at 80.24. And then repairs and maintenance, the sewer line maintenance is at 94.99% and the sewage collection and disposal as a whole is over target at 79%. Culture and recreation, account to note here is under administration, OT wages are at 76.18%. The library as a whole is over target at 54.13. That's just related to the timing of their quarterly payments again though. Patriotic purposes is over target at 114.73%. And then you get to the Warren articles uh, that were passed at the town meeting. Those projects are underway and a lot of those Warren articles you can see now are being ex completely expended or have expenses against them. 2015 encumbrances are showing that 78% have been expended to date and um, more of those projects are going on right now. The recreation fund, fund 24, the balance is $192,837 with the beach sticker donation year to date totaling 8,900 and $16,441 being granted in scholarships from um, the selling of the beach stickers, the parking stickers. The cable committee fund balance is at $100,790. Private detail fund 26 is at $135,979. EMS fund 27 is at $350,404. And the wastewater system development charges um, for 2016, we've collected $39,642. Balance uh, that account has balance of $216,184. And I did break down to show you the different projects that have been approved by the board. So the balance in that account is less than that. Um, the projects just haven't all been completed yet. So the money hasn't been expended. And that is all. Questions from the board? Regina. I don't have any questions, Christy. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, I just have a couple, Christy. First of all, it's a great report, and it's a great report on exactly on how all the money is being spent and everything every month. Is this on the line online? Yes. So when I pass it out to the board, at the same time it goes out to you guys, it's sent to the budget committee directly, and then it's posted on the website by IT. Okay. So any, anybody in town who wanted to see exactly where their money was going, where their Correct. taxes are going, and each line item online. is broken down. In each line item, yep. that, that's really good. The other thing is, you say that uh, revenue is down compared to June of 2015. Yes. Do we expect that to maybe continue throughout the whole year? I think so because in 2015 we still were getting those health reimbursements from Health Trust because of the the rate the way they had been setting their rates and so I think in 15 it was like 235 thousand so that's a chunk of revenue that will be down um, right. so that's attributing that's the big um, contributor to that number being low right but nothing that that, that you would anticipate causing any problems <laughs> no. over the year right. Okay, and the other one was overtime. Tra overtime on most of the accounts is is way up, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, the department heads, you know, made aware of that and, and asked to. Explain. I send all the department heads the uh, their section of the financials, and I also have started to send them um, their page of the summary that I give to the board, so that they can see mm -hmm. what I what is um, what I'm bringing to everyone's attention and that it's brought to their attention at the same time. Yeah, good. And the other thing, because people might hear this uh, figure and say, whoa, what's going on? Hired equipment uh, up 812%, but that's a very small, <clears throat> right. right. So I think just so people don't listen to that and say, wow, that's crazy. I that's, think the line item is like $400 right, or something right. or 500 so it's a very small line item. Right, right. So people, if, you know, if they have questions, they should go online and look at this and any questions to you. Thank you very much. Good report. Phil. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing. Great job. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, thank you for the great job that you do. We all appreciate it. <laughs> so overall revenue is down, but I just want to make it clear that the parking revenue is up. It is. Substantially. It is up. Yep. 
The parking revenue from 2015 is up 37,000 already. It's up even higher, according to Diana last week. Right, because I, mine are only through June. Yeah, she probably gave you guys through July. Up. Yeah, okay. she gave you after the fourth, and that was a big weekend. Yeah. So. Thank you. Very, Very much. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This one is Ed Tinker. Good evening. Good evening. How are you, Ed? I'm good. I'm here this evening to give you an update on the revaluation, which is underway. Um, as part of this uh, update, I'm going to be asking the board for a few things. Um, um, as vision got underway, and our values, of course, as you know, have increased considerably from the 2011 revaluation that we did. The market has changed considerably. Um, we got an, uh, a larger than expected number of hearing uh, requests. Um, the hearings are actually running into the third week, which is this week. So there'll be hearings. Uh, there were hearings today, tomorrow, and Wednesday will be the last day of those. So as part of that, um, values were supposed to be submitted to the board um, as of August 1st. Um, based on your next meeting, which is August 8th, the extra days we need to clean up the large number of hearings um, I'll be asking if we can present those values to you on August 8th. Um, at the same time, because the next meeting is then, the utility values, the utility appraiser is um, just comp just about completed all of the new utility values. Um, they should be done before the end of the week. Um, so the same request will be made. I'll have time to review those values with them, and we'd like to present those as well on August 8th. Um, um, in conjunction with that, I have called the state regarding a, an extension to submitting the MS-1 only if needed, not expecting to need it, but have asked for a couple extra weeks. Um, they've granted that. There is a form that if, if the board agrees or approves to have three signatures, and I can send that in um, at the end of the week or next week or whatever, because um, that's already been approved. Um, so to just give you some update on numbers and values, because there's been a lot of concern out there about the increase in values. Uh, values increase from the, what was assessed in 11 to what's assessed now in 16. So it's a different increase than the market may say. However, they should be similar. And I can I want to give you some numbers to show that those numbers are pretty similar. Um, in 2011, our equalization ratio, which runs from October 1st to September 30th, uh, six months prior and six months after the valuation date of April 1st, we started off at 96.5%. That was the beginning of the 2011 tax year. Um, through 2013, the ratio barely changed. In 13, it was still at 96.7. In 2014 is when we saw a really big change in the market, big appreciation. That equalization ratio in 14 was 90.9 percent, .9%, indicating about a 9.1 percent appreciation in relation to assessments and new qualified sales. Um, in 2015, it even dropped further to 89.4 percent. Um, I also did an analysis for the 2016 equalization ratio. I ran sales from 10.1.15 through April 1, 16, and the ratio had dropped further to 87.7%. So now we're at 12.3 away from that 2011 valuation. I ran an additional report from April 1 to June, uh, July 15th of this year just to see post-effect beyond the revaluation date. And that ratio dropped to 85.4%. So the market's still appreciating Sales numbers are still increasing. We've had close to 150, 160 qualified sales already this year. Uh, the market isn't, you know, just doesn't seem to want to stop. Um, so that that is really what the picture is. We're we're looking at a 15 to 16 percent increase in assessed values on average, and that's really coming in line with where this ratio is telling us we should be where we need to increase to that percentage. Um, 
properties, we're going to have properties that don't increase as much. We're going to have properties that increase more than the average because it is an average. We build an average and apply it to the entire town. So some people are going to see higher increases than others. But once the tax rate's set, the change typically just the same as in 11 and 8 or, or any, any time I've ever done a reval is that the tax, the tax bills typically don't really change a lot. There'll be a group that have similar tax bills, some that might have a little smaller tax bill, some with a little more. There may be some extremes, but those are usually based on correcting information, adding, adding to their property, new construction, additions, things like that. So I just wanted to give you that part of it. Um, also, to go on a little further, a lot of people, you know, think that change in value equals the reduction in the tax rate, like in, like a straight line change, and, and it's really not a straight line change. We try to, and you try, and I try, we all try to keep it as close as possible. There's a lot of things that take effect that we can't really control. I mean, there's things like, you know, development permits, cyclical inspections, but there's also shortfalls that we have to deal with, and we've dealt with them in the past, uh, and we've talked about them in the past. There's been a few, and one that's going to be coming online as of next year is HB 1198, the telephone pole bill. Uh, we don't, we have no idea how that valuation is going to work at this point. We haven't been told the methodology. The state's going to be setting that. They're going to be submitting it to us. It has to do with the tele telecommunication companies, the telephone pole and conduit values. The state will, will, will gather the data, set the rates, how they're applied, and we have to use those starting in 2017. Um, another thing, just to let people know, you know, we have uh, the 79E tax relief incentive. That was granted in 2014. Uh, to a, a condominium project at the beach. That runs through 2018, so there's some effect to that, and I can give you these numbers in a second. And the other is the one we've always talked about, the pollution control exemption, and, and the, the fact that um, DES and the DRA revisited those pollution controls in 2011 and actually increased the effect of those on Hampton especially. So, you know, just as an update, and I really want people to understand that you know, um, the reval is really just bringing properties up to fair market value. We may go up one year, but like we did in 11, we went down. So it, it's just a constant uh, staying with the market, and we do that once every five years. Um, sooner if we have to, but five years, we hope. So like for, <coughs> through 2014, 2018, those shortfalls that I spoke of um, equate to using the 2015 tax rate, so the number could be a little higher or a little lower. Um, all three of those items were in effect and will be in effect through 2018. And that, that short, shortfall uh, equates to about $1.2 million in, in revenue. Um, if we push it out through 2026, of course, uh, 79E ends in 18. So through those years, we just have the, the telephone pole conduit bill, which we're estimating with the best information we have at this point as well as the pollution control exemption. And we're looking at another $630,000 using those estimates. So that number could, again, could be larger. So overall, you know, just for a few shortfalls, you know, these, through 2026, we're looking at like $1.8, $1.9 million. So it's, you know, when the tax rate changes, homeowners should be aware that we, we do our best to try to keep everything relative so values go up, the rate should go down. It just isn't a simple straight line process. So um, if you have any questions, I, I can answer those. Regina? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a, I think the, most of the problem is people are looking at, you know, the 2015 rate and applying <laughs> that to their new yeah, exactly. reassessed value. And I think, you know, I just want to ensure that I'm trying to explain it to them well, that there's other factors involved. <laughs> right. And the, you can't. Right. We can't necessarily determine, and like you say, we're just updating our market value, which, I mean, it has to be done. Right, which There's updates no the town's around. total value, right. which, which should help. The tax rate should go uh, reduce, but we just can't predict. Right, exactly. That it's, okay. Know, yeah. I just want to clarify that. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, have those uh, hearings been going along pretty well? They have overall. They've been been okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we've been able to get most people in who who have asked. I mean, yeah, they they continued to take. There was a there was an issue with the dates on the letter, as uh, a, a, a quick time frame to make the calls. But they've kept the phones open uh, through today, so they've everyone's had plenty of time to. Okay. And Plus, it, we've it, helped a lot of people right up upstairs. We've done our best. Thing, maybe if you can do it, because some people might not understand people on, that listening at home what the equalization ratio is because people might be saying what what is he talking about there I, I don't R understand well it's that. you're right it's 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 the qualified the value the, the sale price the qualified sales <coughs> their relationship to the current assessed value of those properties okay so we always try to be as close to 100 percent as possible okay. um, so when we're talking 84 85 percent we're saying that assessments are that far away from those sale prices right 85, 15 percent below what they're currently selling for. Okay, good. Yeah. So people understand that. Yeah. And the other thing is that you know people should understand that we're always trying to make sure we go after the utilities to pay their fair share. That's, yes. That we're not just going after the homeowner. That, well, that the good thing this year is that we have a, a, an appraiser doing our utilities, right. which is I think the first time right. that that's been done. And, and we did that in order to come up with a better value and a better case. Well, a, 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 a more fair market value yeah. than than what we had been utilizing before, correct? Right. Yeah. And then we're not just letting that stuff, that shortfall slide, that we're actively correct. going mm -hmm. after them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thanks for that. And of You're course, uh, uh, the conduct of taxpayers coming in here to uh, question those uh, valuations uh, has been have been great. It's a complex yes. issue for some. Uh, taxation isn't easy. <clears throat> and thank you for your department. <laughs> Envision Appraisal is, is doing a great job too, and I've, I've sat in down here and just observed some of the people coming in and coming out, and it sounds like they're getting a, a great education uh, in terms of the process and in terms of what it really means and some of the things that Jim brought out. Thank you equally for sharing your information on uh, 79E, on 1198, and on the pollution control exemption at the uh, nuclear plant because uh, there are two sets of taxpayers in this town, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, just elaborate, you spoke about a $2 million shortfall uh, that these taxpayers that come in and uh, their homes appreciate uh, and are subject to increased valuations on the tax rate. Uh, 79E gave $175,000 to luxury condominiums. Uh, that was a law passed by Concord, enabling legislation. I voted against that here with this board. Uh, there was uh, the 1198. We provided testimony uh, before the Senate Ways and Means. You were there. Mm -hmm. The state has usurped the uh, local assessor's authority, and now he's taking that over. Is that correct? That's correct. That gives us less confidence as we share in our, our lack of participation and for our voice to be heard before the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, it's a great concern. We have been uh, disenjoined from actually testifying at some of those hearings, Mr. Welch and I. The uh, poll uh, uh, exclusion will be hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, yeah, it could be. And that is just half the poll. Am I correct, Mr. Welch? That's correct. And what other utility is the other half of the poll? It's the electric business, yeah. Okay, electric business. So uh, while homeowners' <clears throat> values are appreciating and they have to paint their home and insure their home and safeguard their home and code their home, uh, utilities simply uh, strip down a tree, throw it in the ground, and they make uh, revenue off it. Fairpoint Communications is Delaware Corporation. They were the uh, lobbyists, or they spearheaded the lobbying effort in Concord on this. They were Delaware Corporation. They have an office in uh, North Carolina. Uh, the yeah. chief executive was paid $2.5 million last year. His assistant was paid a $1 million. Uh, they are a holding company, and they provide no operations. But our state legislatures, or our state legislation, uh, except for Nancy Stiles, have voted for this. And it's both Democrats and Republicans, and they're voting money in Concord with lobbyists clinging close to the flagpole uh, and taking our tax money. And there's an election coming up in the fall, and voters should be aware of that. And if they do have uh, some uh, concerns about that, uh, that double standard where interstate and interstate corporations like Nextera, like Fairpoint, and like luxury condominium owners, enjoy a different set of taxation benefits than citizens, then they should consider that when they vote this fall. And I want to thank you for the research that you've done on that. Uh, Mr. Welch has done great research. 
Mr. Welch, did uh, Governor Hassan, who's running for the Senate, did she ever get back to you on your letter? She did not. So you're the town manager for one of the 3% three, uh, of the gross revenue uh, to the state of New Hampshire overall. And you wrote a letter to the governor, and she never responded? No. Did she respond to you, Mr. Barton? No. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people interested in moving up the flagpole to Washington, and I find it abhorrent that uh, in terms of the constituent services that they don't reply to you. But I want to thank you, Ed, for the work that you folks are doing yep. um, on the taxation issue, and again, uh, vision appraising as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Yes, thank you, Ed, for doing a great job. And I know it's hard because <coughs> we've had a lot of people uh, commenting, and it's hard for the people to understand. It amazes me that um, that they just can't get it through their heads about the way the tax rate floats. But I guess we'll just have to keep explaining it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, so we need a, a motion and a second to allow you to go to August 8th <coughs> for your... Yeah, Vision and uh, Steve Traub will come in with me and we'll present uh, final Final values or values to you. To make that motion that it, we give them the extension until August 8th to come with the uh, final. I second that. Motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Any uh, else? Just the yeah, the, um, the MS1 extension form. You need a motion to extend. Second. Second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. I'd like to say to everyone really has been, uh, I've asked every person that's had a meeting, everyone has been happy with the way they've been treated by vision appraisal you know during the meetings thank you so i'll just leave this here with you and i can get it tomorrow <clears throat> pick it up in the morning yeah. thanks ed no, thank thanks ed much. i appreciate it yes. good night thanks. next one is carl mcmorn from uh Aquarian in hampton where do we sign this right here uh, yes. yeah i just need yeah. three Good evening, folks. Good evening. Uh, glad to be here. And I've got um, Troy Dixon, who's our Director of Rates and Regulations, um, with me uh, tonight. We're going to just uh, give a, a little presentation on some of the highlights of what's going on um, with the water utility, our um, lawn watering restrictions. Uh, Troy will speak to our monthly billing uh, changes, um, give you an update on our main construction uh, projects. Then I want to uh, just give you a first notice on an upcoming project up at the Exeter uh, Road tank. Um, so regarding lawn watering, it probably should be described as a lawn sprinkling um, restriction or ban. That's what we've tried to regulate with the drought going on. Um, we've asked, asked our customers uh, in the community to cut back on, on the uh, outside water use, uh, primarily through lawn watering. And uh, my thanks to them. They've responded very well. Uh, so we're in, we're in pretty good shape right now. I don't envision any other restrictions, any that may affect homes or uh, or businesses and it all depends on how much rain we get over the next month or so we'll expect another month of probably at least of hot weather um, so um, expect we'll probably maintain the uh, the status quo i do want to thank the department of public works for um, employing their sign to help us get the message out and um, that was uh, that was very valuable so at this point, we've got plenty of water for all the higher priority uses, and um, the lawns are something that we'll um, have to get by in a dormant state for the next next month or so. Um, Troy, I'll <coughs> let you speak to the monthly billing. Uh, as Carl said, my name is Troy Dixon. I work out of uh, the company's Bridgeport, Connecticut office, and I want to give you an update on this on our monthly billing initiative. Uh, first, I want to thank the town for working with us in coming up with a settlement agreement that we were able to present to the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, hopefully, we'll have an order from the commission shortly and we'll be able to continue the initiative. Um, when that order comes in and when we kick off monthly billing, we'll be reading all customer meters on a monthly basis as well as, well as billing on a monthly basis. Uh, we see some real benefits coming about, coming about as opposed to uh, uh, how we bill quarterly now. Uh, we expect we'll be able to detect leaks um, uh, more easily and, and more quickly. Um, we also see some conservation benefits as a result, uh, less lost water, and uh, down the road we'll look at certain conservation rates uh, that will basically charge more for uh, the people who are using more water within the system. Um, 
We also see some benefits uh, with the smaller monthly bills to customers where we'll have a lower on collectibles. A lot of these benefits will also translate into benefits on the rate side where our costs will be down and we'll be able to pass that on to customers. Uh, our target start date is September 1. That is dependent upon that order from the Utilities Commission. Uh, we're currently working on some letters that will go out to customers to make this uh, you know, pretty easy to understand once those first bills come in. And uh, key things to note, there's no change to uh, how we bill for public fire protection and there's overall no change to existing customer rates. Okay. Uh, so just an update on our water main construction projects. Uh, as you probably observed, we've had a lot of activity going on. I uh, included a map in the uh, in handout that shows the areas <clears throat> where we've been working on. Manchester Street and Sun Surf Ave are, uh, are finished and paved. Uh, Toll Farm Road, we've got the new pipe in from essentially Smutty Nose out to the end of Drake Side Road. Um, and there's a 300-foot gap there that will be filled in by the developer project that's going on out there at the same time. And this week we started the work up here, up the street, Lafayette Road, which will extend down uh, Park Avenue. And these last two projects will provide a lot of, <coughs> a lot of benefits. Um, they'll improve fire flows and service reliability on Drake Side Road, which again, if you look at the map, you'll see that that's a long dead end. Uh, so it'll feed it from the other direction. And that's also a third pathway for water to get from our extra road tank down to the rest of town. And uh, they gave you what our estimates are, um, both on the links of Maine that we're replacing and installing, um, and also our cost projections. So total about $950,000. And at this point, about 611000 of that is uh, will be WICA uh, eligible. Um, and then speaking of the extra road tank, uh, just want to uh, give you a heads up on a project we've got uh, on our schedule for next year. Um, the tank's 34 years old, put in 1982, uh, when there wasn't anything else up in that area. And at the time, its ability to, uh, to regulate pressure and provide fire flows was essentially duplicated by the mill road tank. Uh, but since then, as the system's developed, it's spread out, it's spread into those higher elevation areas. So currently, we can't take that tank out of service for any extended time period and still maintain our objectives for, for uh, fire flows and for uh, pressure. Uh, so even though hopefully it'll only be maybe two months to four months at most, it's still too long of a time period to really take it out of service. So it's been a challenge uh, for us from an engineering standpoint. And myself and my staff and our engineering department's been uh, evaluating it for well over a year now. Um, basically, we've got, there's, there's two options. We can build a second tank, have a, a redundant twin up there, or we can do some other uh, system improvements that will pr produce the same outcome. And uh, operationally, a second tank would be a lot simpler. We just take one offline, and no nobody know the difference. But we're talking two to three million dollars, uh, big capital project that also would take capital funding away from other important work. Uh, so the alternative is do some system upgrades, which are considerably less expensive, maybe a third to half of that total cost. And they also have their own benefits. Um, and I listed the major ones there. One is to improve our software programming so that uh, we've got a level of automation. The system can, uh, quote, run, run itself. Um, in order to sustain fire flows, we need to boost our, our pumping capability at the mill road booster and also put an interconnection in with the, with the Rye Water District. Um, so we're going to be working on, on these projects over the next year. Our plan is to take the tank out of service for that work at the end of 2017. Uh, and some of that may carry over into early 20, 2018. But our goal is to do that project and not have anybody notice in terms of uh, any, any change in, in their water uh, service. So, and I'll, I'll be in with, with updates on that as we get further along in, in these projects. So. So those are the highlights of our work you know, to provide safe and reliable water service to the community, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Um, well, I don't, Mr. Welsh, do you have anything to say on this? I just, I just wanted to say I'm glad that you're going to be sending out a notice to the customers explaining everything, because I think it's going to be very confusing when you switch over to monthly billing. Monthly billing. <clears throat> you know, they're going to be getting a bill once a month, and they're not going to know what's going on. So I'm glad to hear you doing that. But Mr. Welsh, as far as anything they have, do you have any uh, 
Well, I think one of the things, and we, we discussed this briefly, but um, one of the things I think that needs to be done is that the utility needs to teach people how to read their meter and figure out when they have a leak. Um, having run a building department for a water utility for 20 plus years, I can tell you without doing that, going to monthly billing isn't going to mean a thing because when you get that huge bill for the leak, people are just going to scream because they don't know what it's all about. We, we try and do that now when people call about high bills. Well, it, but that's too late. So you need to teach them before they call for the high bill. <clears throat> and you, need to, you need to have instructional booklets and you need to have instructional materials that show what happens when you have a leak, what kind of water you can waste very quickly. And it can be very quick um, and very expensive. But if the people don't know how to read the meter and see that, in fact, they're, when everything is supposedly drawn off the house and nothing's running, and that meter is going click, 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 click. You can't hear it, but it's going. Uh, then you know you've got a leak, or you you should suspect you've got a leak. But you've got to do some more training in that area. Yeah, those instructions are available on our website, but we'll include it in the letter as well. Yeah, yeah, I think it's more than that. I really think it's more than that. I think you need to encourage people to call in, get information, talk, have somebody talk to them about it. It's one thing to read it, to read it on a piece of paper. It's another thing to go down in the basement and find the meter. You'd be surprised how many people couldn't shut their water off with the building flooded. Uh, no, I wouldn't. A <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> We've all yeah. had that wonderful experience, but yeah. people yep. need to be educated more. Yep. And Agreed. I think that'll be a big benefit to them and to you, too. Yep. Okay. <coughs> yes. okay. Quantity. I mean, we're in a drought right now, right? And quantity-wise, we're still in good shape here in Hampton? Yep. The reductions we've seen in the lawn watering has, has put us in, in pretty good shape, so I don't see any problems with any other uses at the present time. Okay. And if the, how long would the, if the drug kept going on, would we anticipate in a couple of months that it... <clears throat> well, the big difference is once we get past the seafood festival, essentially, our demand drops like by 50%. Um, so probably if the drought continues, it wouldn't be an issue until next next June or so. Okay. We do monitor basically on a daily basis. Um, and quality. You know, we read about different communities around here having really quality problems with mm -hmm. their waters with carcinogenics and stuff in them. Uh, how about the quality of the water in Hampton? I mean, to the citizens, can we, you know, guarantee them that our quality is right up there and that we're constantly monitoring it? Yep, it meets meets all the regulatory standards. Uh, out of 120 odd some parameters now, we find maybe a dozen. They tend to be the minerals that are in the groundwater anyway. Uh, we're in good shape. There's been no no evidence of any issues related to Coakley or the piece of or anything like that. And we're doing some, we've elevated our monitoring in order to get a little bit more data on that as well. Okay, so we're, we're really on top of that then. Yep. Or you're really on top of that. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, very good. Thank you very much. Phil? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, the uh, handout was very uh, informative, and there's, there's a graph here, and I'm sure you can't see it on television, but it's uh, demand versus production. And startling is uh, if your 10 July uh, production capacity dovetailed with our maximum demand on July 4th, there'd be a shortage. And uh, mm -hmm. I will say to you, and I don't think that's been made quite clear to the public, I don't think that's been made quite clear to business owners, uh, I don't think your company's done a very good job of making that clear at all. Mm -hmm. And when you look at this graph, uh, it's very, very dangerous. Uh, what, what was your, I'm going to ask a series of questions, what were your notifications to uh, the town manager and to our uh, first responding agencies, including uh, Public Works and our sewer system and our fire chief? Um, they were all notified by email or, and or phone, phone call. Okay. Now, were they informed by a phone call? I believe so. Okay. Uh, I was out of town the day we did it. Okay. Um, well, these, these are, these, this is a startling graph, all right, because without water, we're, we're dead in the water, no pun intended. And that means our uh, wastewater treatment plant, and that means our, our fire station, and that means our businesses. And those margins are too tight, and we don't want to get down in this wondering how much water's in these cans on Mill Road and on uh, mm -hmm. on the highway. Would you agree? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Well, I think that uh, you, the town manager, and the fire chief, and the police chief, and the public works director need to meet this week. And, uh, talk about how dangerous that is. This is not uh, the 1800s, uh, and I think we need to develop uh, standard operating procedures. I think the public needs to be informed not only about uh, water sprinklers uh, and little kiddie pools, 
but I think they need to be notified that this can be dangerous and that uh, we need to watch our water consumption. And uh, uh, to look at these numbers any other way as a leader in the community is, uh, is frivolous and dangerous. So I would, uh, I would like to sit in on that meeting, if I may, Mr. Chairman, and I'd like that to go on this week. And we need to spool up our notification process, and we want to make sure that the production capacity and demand is never so close <coughs> to uh, these margins that exist here. And uh, what you folks have for, for capacity or to build another another can of water um, may be the way to go. Uh, it, you know, maybe penny-wise and pound foolish to say it's going to deter other, other projects when we're running this close. And I don't think uh, we have the situation awareness to address this. And I think this is uh, one of the most important uh, issues that we can address this week in the town of Hampton. I, I appreciate your concern. I'd love to sit down and talk about the details. I, I think yeah. Mr. Welch will uh, organize that this week, and thank you very much Excellent. for coming in, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, Carl. You always do a great job, <clears throat> and you're uh, very communicative, and I think that really helps. Um, I'm not in favor of the monthly billing, so I can't get excited about it. Thank you. Well, I think you've uh, you've extended the water a little bit out to Old Farm Road, which we all appreciate that we live out west of 95. Nice to see it go over 95, and maybe sometime that will happen. Uh, but I think Mr. Bean does bring up a good point about our concern for uh, production versus use. And uh, if the town manager can set up a meeting, that would be great. Uh, we should all be on the same page on that. So. That being said, I think I think that the uh, the loop from Toll Farm Road on a Drake side is good for you guys. It uh, gives you that one extra waterway to to get water from uptown or uh, the the, the uh, Exeter Road Tower down to town if something did happen in the other way. So uh, <coughs> making that a a uh, a full circle loop instead of two dead end mains is is definitely a good idea. Thanks. Um, other than that. If there are any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thanks for your time. Thanks Appreciate it. In. The next thing is the approval of June twenty seventh meeting minutes. I move to approve the minutes. Okay. And motion to move. I'll second. second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, just want to make note, the town has received a number of complaints. Now, some of this has to do with the revaluation because these issues come up during the revals. Uh, a number of complaints concerning the manner in which some citizens maintain the outside of their properties. We need to uh, advise that private property is just that, and the town does not have jurisdiction over the manner in which property is maintained unless it violates a state law or ordinance. The place we've been receiving uh, basically cover uh, the area where um, they're talking about uh, lawns not being cut in timely manners, trees and shrubs not being trimmed and maintained properly, uh, buildings not being painted, etc. Um, if you have a problem with a neighbor, please don't come in and complain to us. Please go to the neighbor and talk it over. And if you need help, maybe we can even find some help for you to, uh, to get these things done. Uh, if you've been transported <clears throat> in the town ambulance, please remember to pay your bill when you receive it in a timely manner. That bill is the way we pay for the services the ambulance provides. Ambulance services are not paid off of your tax rate. They're paid off of bill receipts. Uh, and while we have a good receipt process, uh, we do charge an awful lot of bills off because people don't pay, most of them from out of town. Uh, those folks who live in town we know do pay by and large unless they have difficulty. If you do have difficulty or there's something wrong with your bill, please call us. Call the fire department. Let us know so that we can correct the problem or address the problem. A permit from the Department of Public Works is required if you're going to redo and repave your driveway. The permit is necessary so that uh, new pavement will match the street pavement. In most cases, part of the street has to be excavated in order to accomplish that. The matching, um, the 
the part of your driveway is located up on town property, or which you probably see is called the tree lawn. Uh, Public Works also verifies that the necessary dig safe permits have been issued by the under state law so that there won't be a conflict with utilities that are in the street or may be close to where your driveway is located just so they're not hit by the contractor. Please be sure the contractor uh, applies for the permits and be sure he has them in his possession before he starts the work. That's very important. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you and the members of the board are re cordially invited uh, to participate uh, with the American Legion Post 35 Hamptons uh, in the upcoming uh, rededication on Sunday, September 11th, 2016 at 6 p.m. at the American Legion headquarters on High Street uh, with the uh, Global War on Terrorism Monument. You're all invited, and, and the commander wishes to, would like to see all of you there. The other thing I'd like to talk about just for a second, just so that the board knows or has an idea of what's going on, I sent you this huge package of material. Um, I sent it to you for a reason, and the reason was that the information that's being circulated around, and there, there was a hearing this past week, um, or the week before, excuse me, um, on amending uh, section 1700 of the Environmental Code for the State of New Hampshire. And while this is only discussion at this point, the purpose of that discussion was to try to determine whether or not that those regulations should, by federal law, be amended so that any wastewater treatment plant that is located within 20 miles <coughs> of the water supply well must provide uh, drinking quality water at the discharge of the plant. Now, what that means is a tertiary uh, system plus a, uh, uh, another system to clean the water after the tertiary is, is through with it. Um, I've heard estimates of between 80 and $100 million for our plant. Uh, that's a sizable amount of money and even more than we can borrow under the, under the current state laws. Um, while this is a wonderful objective, a lot more needs to be done and uh, keep your eyes open. If they decide they're going to do something like this, we need to nail our state representatives, our senators, our governors, our, our uh, people in the executive council, because this is something that every city in town in the, in the state is going to have to do, and it's going to be prohibitive. You can't put these kinds of costs on the tax rate of a town of 9,000 taxpayers. It's just not, it's fiscally impossible to do. So we need to keep our eye on this, and we are here. We would, we would request people to keep an eye on things like this that they see out in the out in the public, uh, because these costs are just confiscatory. It's impossible for the town to pay them, and the state and federal government are not offering any assistance whatsoever if this regulation goes into effect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions for the town manager, Regina? I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, on the driveway permits, uh, Fred. Did uh, Mark get you the, the notes from? He, he did, but they need to hold a public hearing to do that. Okay. So I wasn't going to announce it All right. tonight because they okay. have to post that for themselves. Okay. All right. So I won't I won't say anything on that. Um, <laughs> I, I started to read that information you sent on the wastewater treatment yes. plants. It kind of hit me, and I, I was like, wow, that's absolutely crazy. It is. It's, it's insane. Now, that's at the state level that they're doing that? <laughs> well, the state can't impose this because under Article 28A of the Constitution, if they oppose it on their own, they have to provide 100% of the funding. So what they've been doing for the last, well, since 1984 when the federal, when the constitutional amendment passed, is they've been going to the federal government and saying, we'd like to get this done, you order us to do it, and then we don't have to pay anything. And that's the method they've been using to get all these new regulations and passed. And the feds doesn't have to, don't have to pay anything? They don't have to pay anything at all, so, yeah, so it's are. all in the right. taxpayer. So, so that's so. something that people really should pay attention to Absolutely. because it's something that would be devastating financially. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, putting a reverse osmosis plant at the end of a tertiary treatment plant is not my idea of a fun thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Welch, can you uh, prepare a letter to uh, for the board's uh, uh, adoption and uh, to vote on it to uh, address the uh, comments on ENV 1700 that you just spoke to? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll send that to the governor. Perhaps she can... Uh, get back in touch with you this time or one of our important staff. Uh, let's uh, forward that to the uh, President of the Senate. Uh, 
the uh, Speaker of the House uh, to our states, uh, um, our, our U.S. Senators, and uh, let's get aggressive on this uh, because uh, we're all tired of uh, federal mandates and people that uh, um, become public servants and go to Washington and, and lose touch with reality and don't have the common courtesy to uh, respond to letters from the town manager and the chairman of the board of Hampton. So if we can uh, uh, prepare that uh, and also um, have the public works director come in and brief at the next meeting for that. It's an important issue, and I find that uh, based on some of the comments earlier tonight on, on legislative pieces, is uh, these things all get put together, the lobbyists work it, and uh, the taxpayers pay for it. And uh, I would oh. like to be very aggressive in this, and I'd like that uh, uh, for the next meeting. And do. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> when did you say the date was for the uh, war memorial? Let me check, make sure it's right. September 11th. September 11th at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The only thing I have, Fred, is I have a, uh, I have a letter here from the, uh, the firefighters mm -hmm. requesting for the third time for the contract negotiations. <coughs> so if you could uh, talk with uh, Jamie next week, see if we can. Jamie's doing Monday, and, and we'll schedule it. Very good. Thank you. New business. First is the approval. What about the old business? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Rick has something for <clears> old business. business. So, matter of priority. Yeah, um, I would like to bring up about the parking um, charging that we passed the thirty dollars uh, last week. There was several things that were said here that weren't factual, and I think that we need to take another look at it. Okay, uh, we can do that. I. Uh, I did check with Chuck Rage and both uh, Mike O'Neill, and I was mistaken. Uh, their, their price right now is 25. Uh, that's their limit um, as of right now. Um, however, if you want to bring up another vote on it, we can. Um, I still think the $30 is reasonable. A uh, number of people that I've talked to down the beach still think that's reasonable. Um, and, and, and I further thought of it when Regina talked about it last week, or two weeks ago now, over <coughs> some of our kids that work down the beach. And um, I think we could do a, if, a, if leave it at the 25, we can leave it at 25, if that's what the, the beach is, is charging for theirs right now, with the ability to go to Excuse 30. Me. I just wanted to point out it's not 25 it's 20 generally it's only 25 on certain days but, and many days it's less than 20 right it, it, it can vary but they, their, their rate right now is their limit is 25 yes, and they do on, that on major on, days on certain days yeah that's, that's what I just said um, but I, so if we want to make it to 25 that's fine um, I still think we should leave it at the 30. I, I think uh, I think that's looking at the beach and looking at the parking areas down there. It's more than reasonable. Um, I've, quite a few people have talked to me and, and and said it's about time that we we started charging what they did down there. Um, but as I was going to say, with in, in, in talking, listening to Regina the other day, was she was her concerned about the thing the kids down there that were parking. I think if if we do have an increase on it. We could also leave it so that if people have town stickers on their car, the, the parking stickers, that we can make it that they only have to pay the 20. So that, so that would at least town's people it would, would get that little bit of a, a break. I didn't hear what G Regina's concerns were. Well, I would say were. a lot of people that work down there, that's they always flock to that lot Inside. because it's $20. Mm -hmm. So they know that they can get right in off 101, they can park right there, and they can go to wherever they got to go. And they don't have to pay 30, 40, whatever the rates are at the other crazy places. Crazy places, right. So, you know, I mean, they work well, down Well, what's there, the difference of why should it, you know, why can't we just stick with what, I mean, we have a entity, the precinct, and we talked about parity. It's basically $20 almost all the time. Rarely does it become 25 And I'd like to talk about that, you know, that's much more expensive than what the parking is on the front. It's only $2 an hour on the front. And the maximum you can pay in an entire day, if you're there for all 
uh, 16 hours is $32. Most of the people that come to the town parking, do that. the town fills those lots up more than once. So we're already collecting much more than what the state collects. Um, we uh, talked about the parity. These private lots, these people are paying taxes on their property. So they're entitled to do what they want. Um, the precinct paid $1 million for the parking, new parking lot that they have, and they find that $20 is enough, occasionally $25. Um, the private, uh, the town lot, again, fills up many times. Uh, we've already heard from the, um, both Diana last week that the parking revenue is up substantially. And we heard it from the um, finance director today. I mean, we shouldn't be, we're not in business to gouge the public. <coughs> we have people that are coming, um, that are families. They don't come and sit in the beach for 12 hours. They come for three or four hours. And I think the $30 is frankly not right at all. We're not paying, that's a legacy lot. The town's owned it for years. We're not paying any taxes on it. We shouldn't be trying to compete with the people that are paying taxes. Um, and, you know, I just, to me, this isn't right. And I think that we need to reconsider this. Uh, yeah, I support the spirit of what Mr. Griffin is saying. There was a motion up to $30. He talks about parity. There is the uh, precinct lot. And perhaps if you offered a motion that, uh, we do a simple check and we're no high, up to 30, but we're no higher than what the precinct is charging for the day. Yeah, However you want to do it, but uh, we shouldn't be in competition with the precinct. It's right across the street. And so that we mirror our cost. So if you and want to make a motion, I support it. I, I agree with that. And right now, they, all, they talk and I've been down there. What are you charging today? Right. What are you charging? So we should formalize So they, they work that out between the two of them. And the precinct and the town have been very good at charging the same thing. So, um, I'm fine with uh, it floating with the precinct, but I don't see why one town entity would pay more than others. And that $25 is a 25% increase. Yep, so, and, uh, and I also know the reason why we're making more money at the precinct lot is because the casino has had more shows this year, and they've been open a lot more, too. Mm -hmm. and that's, why the lots of, that's why the lot is filled up more mm -hmm. is because of the more shows that the precinct is at. I've made a point this week of going and talking to the people at the lots. I talked to the one um, that's over there on Church Street. The kid was in there. He had six parking spaces. He rented all night long. And uh, I don't think that they are, real. you know, I don't think that business is really that good. I went into a motion the motion before we're talking about this. That, that's fine if you want. Uh, I went in the the one yesterday, and I think really uh, there were like five or six empty spaces, and the kids said, "Well, uh, you know, they they don't want to hold up the traffic on the street." And I I think they really do work hard, and I can see how there needs to be attendance there. I'll make a motion that we go parity with the uh, district. But leave our upper limit at 30. Okay, I have a motion in a second. Well, wh wait a minute. What does that mean? That parity? Mean, that means that if the parity precinct... Parity means it never goes above 25. Why no, would we unless, go to 30? Unless the precinct goes The precinct is never going. I've already asked them. And when they do, that's when we need to get together. If we have a motion and we have a second? Second. So we have a motion and a second that we will... We will stay, stay with the, the precinct. 25, stay with what the precinct has. But we have uh, an upper limit if we need to. Upper limit if we need it to 30. Yeah. So a motion is set. All those in favor? All those opposed? I'm against it, and I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Well, it doesn't even make any sense. And, you know, I'd like to say further that, uh, Mr. Waddell, you mentioned that that's the average price. I'd like to know where the average price is anywhere else but Hampton, that people get 30. The motion in the second we voted on it. It's finished. Yep. Yeah. Can I, I'd like you to can just see how you operate, and I don't. I'm losing my respect for you. I will tell you. you that. I'd like to uh, just bring up something else under old business. <laughs> sure. Last week we dealt with uh, some salary adjustments mm -hmm. and some raises, and I'd like to see next year that just that, that we do that in a in a better fashion. That we have more data to deal with, and that's in the budget if we're going to deal with it rather than 
doing it after the fact. Doing it after the fact. I think we should be more proactive on that and going with there. Thank you. Okay. Anything else under old business? Seeing none, new business. We have the approval and acceptance of a bond for off-site improvements of Cornerstone Development. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, all the parties agree, including the developer, <coughs> that the sum of money that should be retained for off-site development is $26,496. I happen to have the check. <laughs> so they're trying, to, they're trying to stay even with what has been agreed to by all the parties involved, including the developer. And we would ask that the board accept the $26,496 as the bond amount. So I need a motion to accept the bond. a motion bond. that we accept the bond. Motion seconded by... No, I'll All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one is Bernie's Beach Bar request to amend existing permit for the entertainment and removal of all license restrictions. Mr. Chairman, uh, Wednesday, uh, Bernie sent up a request to do exactly what you just said. Uh, I sent a request out to the police department and the fire department and, and the building department uh, asking for their input. What I got back from the fire department was as long as they uh, follow the codes and observe what needs to be done as far as codes are concerned, they have no problem. Uh, the building department, uh, basically the same thing as long as they follow all the codes and, and so on and so forth. I talked to the chief of police and um, I know that uh, They've only had one major activity there since they opened, and they just opened. Um, my suggestion to the chief was that it be granted on a, on a trial basis, and so it can go forward tomorrow uh, and see what happens. Uh, if there's a problem, we can address that problem. Uh, if it gets to be a problem that can't be resolved, then it can come back to the board for further determination. But my suggestion is that we do a 30-day trial period, and if necessary, we can extend it another 30 days to see whether or not there are going to be problems. And if they are, let's address them now. But at the same time, let's let the individual uh, use the facility that he's designed and built and taken so much time and pain to uh, hopefully protect um, the beach and everybody in it. Okay. So do we want to bring it to the board first? or we, I see we have Mr. Flurry here. I can't answer that. You have to do that. <laughs> um, any more to put to that, Mr. Flurry? Or Attorney Ellis? Well, uh, we were quite frankly hoping that uh, we would have all restrictions removed and start. It's a new business, a new uh, opportunity for both Al and for the beach, I believe. I, I honestly believe this will be a destination uh, location for the beach. Um, and we'd like we'd like to start out with a with a full license. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, the other way to do it uh, is your ordinance is replete with enforcement mechanisms. If there's a complaint, it comes back. This board retains authority to amend or revoke. The police chief has that authority uh, to cite or to uh, to revoke. Um, I, I just don't feel that it's it's fair uh, to to keep Al on a on a leash for 30 days. He's not new to the community. He's familiar with the town ordinances as they relate to noise. He spent a, a ton of money uh, designing this new facility with the uh, with the noise issue in mind. Uh, so. Uh, Respectfully, uh, on behalf of Al, I'd request that we we start out with a with a fresh, clean license, uh, and certainly see how it goes. But uh, it seems like we ought to at least be given the benefit of the doubt. Start clean, and if if there's a problem, again, you folks have all the authority in the world under your ordinance. Police chief has all the authority as the enforcement agent, and. Uh, it's a small world down there. He's, <laughs> this fellow's not going anywhere. But that would be, it's probably six or one half dozen of the other. Uh, but I would certainly request that we start new business, new license, no restrictions until or unless there's an issue. 
Regina. Yeah, I um, I think I'm not sure really what Mr. Flurry has spent an extreme amount of effort, time, money, not just on Bernie's, but at Wally's, at the GOAT. He's a Hampton guy. He cares about it here. He, you go up to that place and it's amazing. An amazing job you did. Yep. You know, great set people up there. There's gonna be problems. People come to Hampton Beach to stay in hotels and to go to bars and to go to restaurants. He's got three of them. You know, like, like you said, he's not going anywhere. It's a small town. I think we should give him a chance. And if there's a problem, we'll address it like we would anywhere else. Jim. Now, you had the sound engineer and stuff. I, yeah, I was, I have some reports. Yeah, I'd be happy to, to I'd pass. Saw that. I'd like to see one if you don't mind. With the, with the chairman's uh, sure. permission, Al spent a lot of money on the engineering, so. He's done everything. Might as yeah. well get his money's worth out of it. Thank you. We got some nice papers <laughs> here. Yeah. Thank you. So, that's an extra one. Uh, okay. Three minutes. And I have a copy of the, uh, the site plan, if any of you, I think you all are pretty familiar. <coughs> if anyone would like to look at the site plan from the planning board, I have that as well. But I, as I said, I'm pretty sure you're all pretty familiar with the, the venue. And, and our engineer was at the PRC meeting with the chief and everybody else there, and we did everything that we were asked to do to get this lifted, so. Why isn't the chief here tonight? <coughs> I can't answer that. I think he that's did, something he did, that- He did say that he could not be. I'd like for you to say what you suggested. Again, could you say what you had read at the, the suggestion beginning? was to remove the restrictions for a 30-day trial period and see whether it works. One of the chief's concerns is that you have not had a major band in there that has deep tones being played. If that ends up being a problem, we'd rather work it out with you. If you want us to enforce it, it's simple. We just shut you down because you're in violation of the ordinance. We don't want to do that. There's a, there needs to be a workout. I feel like I should be shut down. I should. I feel like if I'm in violation, I should get in trouble. But I, I, I haven't got in trouble or ever been a violation. Well, we haven't tested this new facility either. Any other questions, Jim? Uh, just, just. I mean, I, I just quickly glanced at this. Yeah. It looks pretty elaborate. It looks so pretty. It, uh, and it might not be the worst idea to have Al just address the board on what what he did, what his sound engineer tried to accomplish. <coughs> when I hear sound system, I'm still thinking high fidelity, so <laughs> I'm not the one to answer. 78 RPM. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Some of you might understand my version, but I think he's better qualified. I mean, we went there in that packet. We went above and beyond what any what we could have done. We, you know, we spent on the the PA alone over a quarter of a million dollars and the insulation and all that stuff like we doubled everything up we used safe and sound which is 10 times more expensive than regular insulation I met with the chief mo a couple times on site we walked through the whole thing he was very confident in in, in, in telling me that he was happy with what we were doing and in regards to not having any low tones we've we've been open this whole season with the same bands and the same bands we're going to be having so I'm not I'm not sure where the, what that means but I mean there's there's absolutely nothing we could have done more than we've done in no one you know this our engineer this company they did this is who you hire they did the casino they did the melody tent they did the the hall in Salisbury they've done every venue the house of any venue you've ever heard of Blue Hills they're not cheap they're not obtainable like we had to find them and get them to do this this is like the smallest place they've ever done and they were like are you sure you're you know comfortable paying for this and doing this mapping I said I think I have to to kind of get a fair shake you know in in town and prove that I'm looking to do what I'm supposed to do you know we can stuff's come so far three years ago when I did this all this with Wally's and I walked through everything with with Jamie Sullivan and he was happy and we moved past that hurdle and got there and now that has been put to sleep and I don't get you know problems over there from neighbors or anything like that I had problems when it was Le Bec Rouge 
the same problems that Desi and Tracy had with the same neighbor. I moved, like nobody would do that. Nobody would take the stage and move it 150 feet away just because, you know, just to have the opportunity to play music. You know, this, uh, speakers have come so far that the software now in the boards, they map you. If, if, if Rusty moved his water, it would know that they moved the water to adjust the speakers. To, it's, it's all on CAD, it's all a big computer now. So we, in, in, I went through this with the chief and we went through this at the review meeting, you know, we can dictate what our, you know, everybody else sets up speakers and plays it. And then if, the, if somebody says it's too loud, they come down and turn it down. I can say to the end of my glass, I want to be at 75 decibels, and that's what it is. There's no question in, in it. It's, it's a locked system. It's, I have an engineer there. Nobody else has an engineer besides the casino ballroom. Same engineer that I have. And you know, like we, like we can tell you the decibel level, you know. And we've tested it. We test it every day, and we can adjust it. So if there's nobody in in, in the restaurant, in in the in the, or on the, that area, it tones itself down because the people absorb the noise. And we, you know, we we went through placements of our tables, like the way that people, you know, like some of our the. Some of our railings are glass, some of them are wires, some things are put here, there. Sound deafening stuff is put all over the place in different ways so that you can control it. And that's, we've, we've done everything. There's nothing else we can do. I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine, I agree with Regina too. Phil? Yeah, thank you, I will not be voting on this evening, but I find uh, council's uh, uh, assertions uh, unimpeachable. I find uh, both uh, selectmen across the way here uh, 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 very cogent and uh, clairvoyant in their uh, perception of the operation. And uh, I find it uh, difficult when I'm down at the North Beach having an ice cream. And uh, who knows these people that drive these motorcycles? And they actually do uh, physical air damage to my grandchildren when we're sitting there having an ice cream. Uh, and then we have taxpayers and business owners that are subject to this. And when we start taking that type of physically injurious uh, noise threat seriously in this community, uh, then I can think we, we can start looking to uh, taxpayers, employers, and people that draw people uh, to uh, uh, enrich their lives and enjoy their lives in this community as, as successfully as many of the people that run businesses in this town do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Griffin. <coughs> So, am I to understand that the police chief is in the same position that you have, Mr. Welch? The police chief didn't even want to recommend this be talked about. Uh, I suggested to him that the most moderate thing I could think of was to allow a 30-day trial period, removing all the, all the restrictions, and just go for it. If it works fine, that's fine. There's been no test. Um, no system has failed for, is foolproof, so to speak. Uh, if, if you decide to remove all the restrictions and you have the right to do that, uh, by the time you end up getting enforcement done, the new license will be due. So uh, this is it's a very long, evolved, complicated process to put restrictions back on because you're taking them off and you're issuing an unrestricted license. You're not going to be able to get there from here before the new license is due next year. And why does he think it shouldn't be talked about? He was not prepared because he had not heard any of the deep decibel levels that have been played before. Um, deep tones tend to carry much farther. So does that mean he's against it? No, he doesn't mean he's against it. He agreed with me that they should be given a trial to see whether it works properly or not. If it does, remove the restrictions. In fact, if, it, if you're going to do that, you remove the restrictions now, subject to 30 days worth of testing which means there are no restrictions. And at the end of the 30 days, if nothing nothing's wrong, there are no restrictions. My position is to take the position of the town manager and the police chief. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we amend the existing permit for entertainment to remove all license restrictions from Bernie's speech bar. A second. We have a motion and a second. Um, and again, that gets back to the point that if there is a problem with it, you're stuck we, with it till the next permit. We're stuck with it till the next permit, but the police chief is also the one that enforces it, and he can shut it down at any time, correct? Uh, except after 11 o'clock. So. If it's after 11 o'clock, our ordinance is not enforceable for sound noise. So and we know that. It's been, we've been told that by the legal people. Um, it's just not enforceable. So 
you want to play at 157 decibels, you can go ahead and do it. I would like to say that this is the first time I've ever seen the, uh, the board make a vote against what the police chief recommends. The first time ever. Police chief didn't recommend anything. Police chief. Yeah, have we listened to Mr. Welch. Mr. I don't think we need to listen to you say okay, something so that's not necessarily hold on, true. Hold on. First of all, the police chief has not made a recommendation. It was Mr. Welch. I just listened to what Mr. Welch said. Excuse me. He. I he listened also to Mr. Said, Welch, like I said. All right. So you want to? You don't speak have over to tell everybody? me what Mr. Welch said. I, I don't heard have to what tell he you. said. And you're right. I know I am. Okay. So we have a mo motion and a second. Okay. All those in favor? Those opposed? Three opposed, one abstention. Thank you. Thank you, and we won't be back to see you. We hope not. <laughs> and, and for the record, I'm just trying to make a really nice place for everybody. It's not low decibel, crazy stuff like you think. We have families there all the time. It's very nice place. Everybody's going to gonna really like it. I just want the same rules as everybody else. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next one we have is a review in the award of public works truck bids in accordance with the town purchasing policy. Waivers of less than three bids on a one-ton truck. Mr. And I see our public works director is here. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'm yes. not going to recommend the one-ton truck purchase to you tonight. Uh, I talked to the recreation department, and one of the things that bothers me greatly is that the vendor never came to review the equipment that's being traded and therefore never offered a trade price on the one-ton vehicle, uh, which leaves us with trying to dispose of that vehicle for probably less than we can get for it on a trade-in. So what I'd like to do is on the one ton, I want to go back and rebid. Okay. Because I think that will give us a better price. And we didn't have three bidders on it anyways, did we? We did not. So that's fine. But on the the other truck bids? The 35 GVW, I believe the Public Works Director and I are in conformance and agree with what should be done with that. And I'll let him go ahead and present because it's he's going to get stuck with the truck. So. Well, hopefully he's not going to get stuck with it. He'll have it for 15, 20 years, yes. so that's yeah. a long time. Ten of my years and one, ten of somebody else's. Um, <laughs> just to be clear on the, the heavy-duty truck, uh, bid number 005, right. my recommendation only covered the... the uh, Very good. My department's truck it did not cover the rec department's nor not did I intend to, um, because they literally spec'd out something di a lot different than what we did. Um, there was, in talking to staff, confusion as to whether they wanted to trade the vehicle in or not. Uh, there, when the bid got put together and put out, it was did not mention at all rec department trading in their vehicle. Um, my only caution with rebidding our, if we rebid the whole bid, other parties already currently know what other people bid, and I'm not sure how that would fall out. But for my, for my position, 005 is only a partial award. It's only one of the trucks, two trucks that are in there. I did not want to speak for the um, rec department in my recommendation. I made that clear. Okay. Um, the other um, bid, 216.004, is for two new six-wheel dump trucks, wings, and plows. Um, we've been, um, I actually put together a recommendation about three weeks ago, and in talking to staff about it, and then talking with, uh, at the time, acting town manager uh, Sullivan, um, I was uh, rushed to judgment, as they, they would say. Um, wasn't uh, slowing down enough to, trying to run it and gun it. Um, the request was from the department, let us drive all the trucks that we bid. We'd really like to see how these things work out. Um, that's the same process we did a year ago when we bought the cat loaders, we bought the uh, cat uh, backhoe. We actually at that time drove all three of the loaders. There was a John Deere, there was a the cat, and there was a Volvo. Um, in the end they all liked for visibility reasons, safety reasons. They liked how the cat handled, operated, and how they could see out of it. So the same kind of process was used this time. There was these four major drivers of these pieces of equipment. And collectively, 
they said if we had the money, they would really like to have the max. But knowing that we didn't have all the, the enough money, um, the truck that they liked the second best was the Freightliner with the 180 inch axle to axle length. There's actually two Freightliner trucks in here. One's got a shorter axle to axle length than the other. Why is that important? When it has all the gear on it, the front blade and the wing, it's much easier to operate with a little longer wheelbase. Um, so the recommendation, and, and also the boys uh, wanted the bigger salt spreader, which was a $1,500 upgrade, uh, was shown in the bid. So the whole thing for two trucks came to 303, uh, 804. Um, I anticipated a question or questions. Why? You know, wh why not the max? Um, because, to be honest with you, we wish we could have uh, afforded them. But in the even in the time frame that we put our initial numbers together a year ago and came to this point in the ward, each Mack truck went up $11,405. Uh, would have put us 20, would have left us $20,000 short. Would have left us with, without the one ton truck with wing and plow. And to be honest with you, we need every piece of equipment that we have out there operating. We have 22 routes, um, some wide streets, some narrow streets, so we have equipment assigned to the proper streets and routes. Um, so I actually need all three vehicles. I couldn't, can't make the MAC decision to go to the MAC and, and, and drop this truck. I think it would be, one, unfair to the voters because we said we were going to buy three trucks. Uh, it would be unfair to the voters because, uh, to be honest with you, there's nothing wrong with a Freightliner. We already have a couple of them. Matter of fact, I have one that turns 20 this year. So we can get 20 years out of these trucks. We can get 20 years out of any of the trucks. Um, so that, that really was not the issue. So based upon that, um, low bid does give a uh, acceptable, qualified product uh, that the department can use and utilize for the next 20 years. We'd be very happy with it. Questions from the board? Regina? I don't have anything. I think low bid sounds good. Jim? Uh, if you're satisfied with it, if your people are satisfied with it, if you think it's a truck that can do the work. I am, and, and, and the, uh, the staff is satisfied. Right. I'm, I'm acceptable. Yeah. Bill? Uh, just standing by for a detailed motion to vote on, sir. Rick? No questions. I think you've done a good job at, at going through them all. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, by allowing your staff to at least operate them first, you've given them the opportunity to see which ones you like better. Right. Which ones you, they seem would work better. They won't let me in them, so it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I um, guess I'm now looking for a motion for to accept the... I make a motion that we accept the uh, the bid on the two on the two uh, ten wheel uh, six wheel dump trucks. Yes, I'll so second it for the price of the two three hundred three thousand eight hundred and four dollars. There you go. The motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. And the other one, you had only one qualified bidder on the. the we one. sent out the seven different companies. We had uh, two companies uh, submit bids, um, Liberty Chevrolet and Holloway GMC. Um, I know I've spoken to the board in the past. Uh, Ms. Barnes was not on the board at the time. One of the questions that we've always been asked is when we have our spring, au spring auction, um, how come we wouldn't put our used vehicles in the spring auctions, the ones that had reached their serviceable life. And if you go to the to this page of the, the document, you see the value that they, we were given for all four of the trucks. Um, substantially, the low bidder in, in both this round and in a prior round has been Liberty Truck. Why? Because they give us more money for our trade-ins. Thus, their bottom line is they're using a sharper pencil. Uh, they want the work um, because they both basically start out with the same cost truck. Um, but Liberty gave us uh, 1500 more for Unit 18. They gave us uh, 300 more for Unit 19. They gave us 300 more for Unit 23. Uh, overall, they, um, gave, oh, and they gave us 2500 more for Unit 36. So overall, they were approximately 4500 
higher in trade in value, which was 4,500 lower in price. And that's why they're the low bidder for the same product. So they're taking four trucks for the trade in? They are taking four trucks 18, 36, 18, 19, and 23. These would not affect um, 36, which is actually the one ton that we're trading in. The other three are pickup trucks that um, they've already been phased out of various snow plowing routes. And, and one of the trucks was actually the transfer station's truck that didn't have a pickup, did not have a plow blade on it. You said you got two bids and you put out to seven. seven. We put out seven in the region. And town manager, what was your? There actually you put out to eight. Eight. Thank you. I counted eight on the list. Okay. So, my problem, my only problem is that, and, I, and that doesn't make any difference to me. I mean, I'll sell the other truck. <clears throat> you just won't get very much for it. You'll get a hundred or two hundred dollars for it. <clears throat> Excuse well, me. I would recommend that we rebid the rec department's truck. Well, we the problem them. is I can't divide a bid oh. because they were bid together. Um, if I award a bid, I've got to award the bid. That's the problem. So. so. If you want to award the bid, I have a problem with that, but we need to understand that I have to sell the other truck. So, it's going to require us to put a bid out to sell it. That's just the okay. case. Or could I suggest that we keep it as a town property and use it as a trade in value for the next round? We can do that too. Yeah. Does that work? They'll take anything for trade. That, I mean, you'd still get the trade on yours, right? Yes. Yep. So, mm -hmm. and she could still close on hers. Okay. Make her recommendation close on hers. We would just retain that other yeah. truck. Okay. And, and do, is this a problem of where we keep it or anything? Yeah, probably kept in public works where it could be kept on the site. I mean, today we had, we actually loaned out a vehicle to uh, IT. Uh, Paul's vehicle is down. Yeah. Just said him, hey, here, have, take a truck. Uh, all the people, everybody in highway except for one person was working in trash. We didn't need the truck today, so we, we loan it. So we'll do the same thing in this situation. So make a motion that we accept? Accept the, the bid for the one tons. The one tons? And, yep. and, and waive the purchasing policy. And waive the purchasing policy, noting that it was sent out to eight people, right. eight businesses. To request for bids, and, only and we only respond. received two back. And if you resent those out, you'd still not. Yeah, we'd still get anything back. Other still than be the, the seven, right? We, yeah. The amount of forty-four thousand. I know my truck to be forty-four seven seventy-four. I don't have the, all the paperwork here for the Rex to run the truck. I don't either. It was on your bid, but. Uh, 42166. 42166. Yes, thank you. So, there's been a motion. motion. Second. 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 All those Do in it. favor? All those opposed? I'm abstaining. One abstention. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Thank well, you got me? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The next one is. Uh, Rockingham County Collective Purchasing Program. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the, uh, we received a communication from the county, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Engineering and Municipal Services Division, the purchasing coordinator. Uh, they're attempting to put together a consortium for all the cities and towns in Rockingham County as well as the county to look at bidding for different quantities that cities and towns in the county use on a regular basis. And my suggestion is that we sit and talk with them to find out what they're really doing. I mean, one of the things they used was um, an example of that uh, they could bid out salt for winter time. Well, we already everybody already uses a state bid, which is going to be less than whatever they can bid. Uh, but there are tons of other things that we bid out constantly and purchase constantly that we could cooperative, cooperatively bid together and receive much less as a cost. So. My suggestion is that we go. The board authorizes us to go ahead and work with the county to see what they're proposing to do, and if it meets the criteria of what we need, we'll bring it back to the board for your approval. So moved. Second. Second that. I can see a great savings in like paper products and oh, stuff absolutely. like that. So yeah. office products and everything yep. else. So 
All right, we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Four, one abstention. Community evidence request to find no objection for a new liquor license and a brew pub license. That's all the information I have. So moved. Second. So we have a move and a second for a new liquor license and a brew pub license. We have a motion and second for the community oven. All those in favor? Unanimous. Request for a memorial bench at Kids Kingdom. Mr. Chairman, uh, we had a request come to the Recreation Department <clears throat> uh, for a memorial be bench for a mother and recent resident, uh, Carrie Hunter, uh, who died of cancer about a year ago. They would like to have a bench someplace in town, and they've suggested Kids Kingdom for that bench. Recreation Department has approved it. They, they, could, they could use it there, and, uh, but it requires board approval to accept the gift. Motion. motion that we approve to accept it. Second. Motion seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. I'm glad they at least checked with the, the rec department they first did. to they make sure. Careful. I know she has some places in town that have too many benches already and people want them put in certain places. So if she can if she can uh, approve it, that would be we all the better. We have a policy if they if they come to the selectman's office or uh, other office in the town, it's all night for referred to recreation to see whether or not we have a place for it. Very good. Closing comments. I have nothing. Um, just I should have said it in announcements, but I didn't. But people ought to take a look at the town, the clock that's being put in front of Center School. It's coming along really nicely, and yes. it's looking pretty good. It's quite yeah. a construction. Yeah, they're doing a real good job. Yeah. Of Closing comments. Motion to adjourn at 2039. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you.